the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens confess your name as our Lord and Savior. We say, Jesus, you are our Savior and you are our Lord. You're King of King and Lord of Lords. Jesus, you are the center of our lives. You are, oh God, the one who sent your loved one, Jesus, Emmanuel, God among us. And all we have to say is, Jesus, 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 like the blind man on the side of the road neglected by everyone son of David son of David Jesus I need your healing son of David son of David Jesus Jesus I need your deliverance I need your touch oh Lord you are the center rumbles Jesus 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 at your name the mountains crumble Jesus 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 at your name there is no wall Jesus 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 Thy walk through the valley of the shadow of death you are with me, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a sweet name, what a sweet name, what a sweet name, what a sweet name, what a sweet name that could not hold you. Oh. oh, hallelujah. If death could not hold Jesus back, there is nothing that you're going through. There is no one in your life that can hold you back. He has made a way where there is no way. He has removed the stone that you may see his glory. And all you have to is do is call out to his name and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for your love for us. So great that you will not let us be separated from you. And you send your son that we may be reconciled. That we will know you, the God Almighty but the God also who is love. We praise you and give you thanks. Amen and amen and amen. And turn to your neighbor and say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Yesterday I was speaking to a friend and I said, you know, 
there ain't going to be any preaching and teaching in heaven. There's going to be worship. So don't complain about five songs. Because there will be 5,000 million Trisillion songs in heaven. <laughs> Woo! And there won't be any preaching and teaching because Jesus, the word made flesh, will be there. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. I got my bags packed. I got my ticket ready. The date hasn't come yet. But when the date comes, I'm ready. I'm ready to meet my maker because Jesus, Jesus made a way. Amen. Today we commence or begin a series of messages which will culminate, hopefully, in the understanding that who we are as individuals and who we are as a group of committed believers is directly related to having Jesus at the center. Mark Twain used to say that there are two most important days in a person's life. The day they, they, that they were born, so all of you have already had that day. And the second day, the day when they figure out why they were born. I got great news for you. I'm thinking today, you're going to find out why you were born. So you will have out your two most important days already. How about that? Listen, if you are not a committed follower of Jesus, and if Jesus is not at the center of your life, it's okay. If Jesus is not at the center of everything you do, it's okay. I pray, and I prayed this week that this series of messages beginning today will bring you the understanding that your life was created for a purpose. And that there's only one you. I turn to the neighbor and say, there's only one you. Okay, don't add, thank God, okay? <laughs> Just say, there's only one you. There's only one you. And you know, God has provided a way for you to reconnect with your purpose. You see, you're unique. You are original. You're created for a purpose, formed for a hope and a future. And if you're overwhelmed by the circumstances of your life right now and you're lost your purpose and you're a little confused about your future, I got great news for you again. God has provided a way for you to be redeemed. He has provided a way for you to be redeemed from your sin, from your shame, and from your past. You are being summoned by your heavenly father. And he has a new identity for you. You see, this is our first message, and it is the message of the Bible verse that we have had for this year. Isaiah 43, verse 1. The basis of all these month messages comes from that. So we're going to start with Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Now, let's read that again. But this time, if you don't feel that it is sacrilegious or disrespectful to write on your Bibles, or if you're using the Bible app, your version, you might just only be able to highlight it. But I want you to read this again with me. But I want you to circle the following words. Are you ready? But uh, now, this is what the Lord says. He who, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Created in God's image. Formed for his divine purpose. Redeemed from sin, shame, and the past. And summoned by a new name. Created, form, redeem, summon. Let's say that together. Created, form, redeem, summon. With Jesus at the center, you will understand that you have a new identity in him. You are no longer an accident of nature or maybe a, night, a one night stand for your, from your parents or who knows what. No, you're not not that. You were not an accident. You are not a mistake. You were not an afterthought. You were not a, oops, we're having another baby. No. 
God created you. And he created you in his image. And he formed you for his divine purpose. And he has provided a way for you to be redeemed from sin and shame and the past. And he is summoning you for a new identity, for a new name. In the upcoming weeks, we'll be talking about formed and redeemed and summoned. But today, I want us to talk about created. You see, he who created you. See, to create is to bring something into existence. He created you and I in his image. Where you and I didn't exist, where mankind didn't exist, God brought us into existence. We didn't have a beginning until God gave us a beginning. God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they had each other. They didn't need you and me. They did not need mankind. But they created heaven and earth, and they saw that all of this was good. And then we read in the first chapter of the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis, in verse 26, this is what we read. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the, crowd, the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. How do you like them bananas? You were born a ruler already. Think about that. It says that God created heaven and earth. And after he saw that everything was good, he... Father, Son, Holy Spirit decided, hey, let's... Let's create someone that will rule over all of this. So if you are finding yourself like you're at the end, that you're the tail, today, let me tell you, you're not. You're the head. Amen. But who is God that we were created in his image? The Bible speaks about God is spirit. Not that he's a spirit, but that he is spirit. God is love. And God is light. We can talk about many of the attributes of God, but in these three words, there is the essence of who God is. God is spirit. John 4, 24 says God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The fact is, it means that God the Father does not have a human body. He's invisible. Jesus, the Son, in order to come live among us, he had to take human form. Which is why he is Emmanuel, God with us. God is spirit. We're made in God's image. Well, that means we are spirits. You got it. You see, the time will going to come when this spirit is going to let go of this body. I'm asking God for a glorified body, a little taller, a little thinner, a little more athletic. I don't know if he'll listen to me or not, but I know one thing. My spirit lives on. So when a believer life ends here on this earth, we rejoice because we know that they're going to be in the presence of God. When an unbeliever life ends on this earth, we should weep because we know they're not going to be in the presence of God. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So there was a body, but nothing in it. There was a lifeless human body, and not until God breathed into his nostril did he come alive. Which is why it's important that we understand this. The question is, for you and for me, will our spirit live in the presence of God, in the presence of love and light, or will our spirit live in the absence of God, in the absence of love and in darkness? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. And we only have but this temporary life on this earth to decide where we want to spend eternity. God is spirit, the Bible says, but also God is love. In 1 John 4, 8, it says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So stop hating, haters. Check those Facebook posts. Just saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8 says, love is patient. Say patient. 
Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It says others. Everyone else is included in others. Did you hear what I'm saying? Whether they deserve to be dishonored or not, you don't dishonor them. You know how many times we sit in the seat of judgment and the seat of the scornful? When someone that we know has walked away from God or walks in disobedience or are living in darkness because they're not living with Jesus at the center. And we say, mm, 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 I knew that was coming. How dare you sit in the seat of judgment? What we should say is, how can I help God? Give me an opportunity so that I can go and redeem them as you have redeemed me. You see, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of, mm, 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 no record of wrongdoing. Throw away that little notebook that you have with the people that have done wrong to you. You know how many times someone comes to talk to you about somebody and say, oh, you know, I knew that was going to happen because I remember when she was working with me, this is what she did. You have been created in God's image. God is love. And love does not keep a record of wrongdoing. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, say protect, always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That part always annoys me sometimes because I would like to do it 90% of the time. Your children... When they're small, you always want to protect them. And you're tired and exhausted. Oh, let them fall and hit themselves. They'll learn a lesson. God doesn't do that. <laughs> he teaches us and teaches us. And yes, we'll fall and hurt, but he's there to pick us up and to show us the way. And we need to be able to do that. Always protect. Always hopes. Always perseveres. God is love. And God created you and I for his pleasure just to love us. Can you imagine that? Like, come on. How many of you have children? You know, and they're small. They haven't become teenagers yet, okay? And they do anything. You're like, oh, oh, oh. you delight in them, right? They go into the bathroom, and they take the toilet paper, the roll, and they roll it all the way to the living room. Oh, look what my baby did. <laughs> and you take a picture and post it on Facebook. And you say, he's or she's going to be an adventurer. You delight in your children. You don't only delight in them when they're doing things right. Am I correct? See, you don't have to be singing a praise song or being on your knees worshiping or praying or fasting for God to delight in you. He delights in you because you are made in his image. You are created in his image and God is love. We are made in his image. So who we are and Everything we do should come from love. Everything. Because love conquers all. I just heard a story, as a matter of fact, yesterday of a high school principal in Newark, New Jersey. And um, since I'm from Jersey, some of you are from Jersey, Jersey, yeah, Patterson High School, Eastside High School, the ghost, all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. This principal realized that 85% of his students were missing two or three days of school a month because they were being bullied for not having clean clothes. So what did he do? He rallied. He spent the last two years, actually 2017 and 2018, lobbying to secure $20,000. And he put a free laundromat in the locker rooms where the kids can do their laundry after school. You see, he's not just providing the students with an opportunity to have clean clothes. He's taking away the fuel for bullying. What compelled him? What inspired him? What motivated him? Love. 
love. There was a study done some years ago of 200 students, and the researchers came back and said none of them are going to succeed, perhaps because of their environment, perhaps because of what they, they answer the questions. Years later, about two dozen years later, they went back. And out of the 200, 176 they found, 20 of them had already passed away. Of those 176, all had gone on to have successful careers. So they went and asked all of them, and there was one common denominator. It was a teacher. And so they went and asked this teacher the secret. Do you know what the teacher said? I just love them. I just love them. Can you imagine in each and every one of you will just take upon yourself the image of God who is love and just love your neighbor. Love your neighbor's children. Love your colleagues, your coworkers. Love the people across the hall that don't look like you, don't talk like you, don't dress like you, don't live like you. you just love them. Just love them. God created you and I in his image to love him above all things and to love one another. Are you loving God above all things? Or just in your spare time? Are you worshiping him? Are you giving him the glory, giving him honor in how you carry yourself? Are you being like Jesus? Who came to serve and not be served? Who came to destroy the works of evil? Are you doing that? Because that's what we were created to do, to love one another, to show God's love to those around us. And as a community of God's children, God's love must have the place in all we do. The priority in all we do. It's important that we understand that because God created us in his image. And he is spirit and he is love. And in John, 1 John 1, 5, it says that God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So God created us in his image and God is light. So guess what? We are cre created for God's light to shine through us so that others may see our good deeds and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. That others may see there's nothing about being a sick Christian in here. There ain't nothing about being a CIA undercover Christian here. There's nothing about keeping your faith personal or individual. This is to go public. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 5 says, You, you are all the children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Did you hear what I just read? You do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So guess what? You have no business doing things in hiding. Because if you're hiding, you know you shouldn't be doing it. When we hide to do anything, you know you're up to no good, girl. Guy. Do you know one thing we did? As our children grew up, and I thank God for the wisdom that God gave us in raising a blended family of six children. That's where I got my gray hairs, but I never, you'll never see them because I cover them. <laughs> we never allow them to have a TV in their bedroom or a computer in their bedroom. Because while they're underage, they're under our authority and under our protection and under our love. We used to have the computer in plain view where we knew what they were all doing. And one TV in the family room, and it was a family room. And when we watch TV, I think some of you know that, we're watching something, and something was all right, I would say that's fornication, that's adultery, that's murder. As they became older and became teenagers, mom, we already know, please, let us watch the program. <laughs> Nothing in hiding, because we're children of light. We're children of righteousness, of holiness, of goodness. We have no business with darkness. None whatsoever. We are children of light. God is light, and we are created to shine God's light everywhere. Jesus clearly stated it in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, 15, and I'd like to read that 
in the version, the message. Here's another way to put it, he says. You're here to be light. Bringing out the God colors in the world. Isn't that awesome? Bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? Hear me out. This place is going to go public. We are going to break down the walls of separation, of culture, of race, of differences. We're going to open up the doors. We're going to crack open the walls. And we're going to say to the world, we are here at this place to proclaim Jesus Lord of all. We are here at this place to provide your means by which you can be trained, in which you can be transformed, in which you understand your purpose, that you may go out there. Don't you stay or stay here. I'm going to take your chair away from you. God has called you in this house. You're not down the other house. They're all wonderful. They all have a different calling, but this house has this calling. We are to be a beacon of light. We have to have a center where people come in one door and go out the door. But in the meantime, in the meantime, they are trained. They are training knowing that they are change agents, that they are light bearers, that they are spiritual people led by the Holy Spirit, that they are ones who do good deeds, that the community will see it, and they will glorify God the Father. So if you're here today, you're in trouble. Because you didn't come here by accident. You could have gone to any other wonderful congregations in this valley, but you came to this place. You came to this building. You came to this center. To hear that God has created you. That you may go out. Not stay here. Oh, you come here. And you celebrate. And you sing. And you jump on and down. But you better be reading your Bible. You better be praying and fasting. You better be studying. You better go to those groups. Because let me tell you something. You're coming here. To be transformed, that you may bring out there the light of Jesus, that people's lives will be changed and communities be transformed because you, my friend, are a change agent. One created in the image of God. We need to go public. So if you're quiet and reserved, don't you worry. I have a bullhorn I'm in my office. I'll be more than happy to hand it over to you. You may be thinking, that's all good and dandy, Marilyn, but my spirit is broken. I don't even know what love is, and I'm such a funk that I might as well be in a dark tunnel. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I want us to go back to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. <laughs> this is what it says. But now. Say, but now. But now. Say it again. This is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. You see, I want you to understand that the reason why this verse starts with but now is chapters 1 through 40. If you look at the book of Isaiah, right before Isaiah 43 that says but now, all you're going to read about is the judgment on God's people because they went a wire. They, they left God. They disobeyed God. And they were in a funk. And such, they were held captive in Babylonia. You may not be held captive in Babylonia today, but you may feel like you're held captive. But in all of those chapters, you will see the things that they went through. They were in a worse situation than you were. At least you can go drive through McDonald's or go down to Wawa. They didn't even have any of that. But here comes Isaiah 43. Yeah, you have been taken away from your homes and from your land. Yes, you are being held captive in Babylonia. Yes, you're going through a funk right now. But, but now, listen carefully. But now, this is what the Lord says. The one who created you, the one who formed you, or oh, the one who says, do not fear, for I have summoned you by your name, by the name I'm giving you. You belong to me. I ain't going to let anybody take you away from me. The reason it starts, but now. You see, you may be in a very bad place due to your own disobedience. 
But God still loves you. He hasn't stopped loving you. Do you stop loving your children when they disobey? No. You let them suffer the consequences of disobedience and you cry with them. We sometimes make Jesus cry for the things that we do because all he wants is for us to live a life that's glorious. And you'll see that in a few minutes. The one who created you. And I, Isaiah 43, if you have a, just open it up. Listen, he says, but now, listen to me carefully, but now, <laughs> when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. But now, when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. But now, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God. But now, but now, the Holy One of Israel, I'm going to save you. I'm your Savior. I'm the one who created you and formed you. I am the one who's redeemed you, and I'm summoning you by name. So don't you worry what you're going through right now, because now is the time. Now is the moment in which you have to make that decision. Are you going to continue disobeying, or are you going to say, Lord, you have made me in your image. I'm spirit, therefore spirit-led. You have made me in your image, therefore I am loved and to love others. You have made me in your image. You have created me so that I can be the light because you are light. You see, this is how I figure God. He says, these people got messed up. I know they're going to need someone to show their way back to me. I mean, I know I created them in my image, but I'm going to have to give them somebody to reintroduce them to my image. And this is why Jesus came. This is why God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe in him eternal life. You can't know me. God, I'm thinking was saying, you can't know me. You, you can't know unconditional love until you've met my son. You can't see me because I'm spirit, but now you can see my son because he has taken human form. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And if you know the son, Jesus, you know the father. God says, I love you so much. I wasn't going to let you suffocate in your issues, in your day-to-day -day routine. Perhaps that's what's happening to you right now. Perhaps you don't have life. Perhaps you say, you know, but Jesus came that you may have life. Jesus came that you may be loved and love others, that you may be light unto others. That you will dissipate the darkness wherever you are. Can you imagine if you understood completely the fact that you were born, created in God's image, and that you are light and everywhere that you walk, you break the darkness because you are the light. If the demons are coming on this side of the wall, they're going to go on the other because they're not going to want to mess with you. Because you know who you are, and you know why you're here, and you know who your God is, and you know who your Lord is, and you know who your King is, and you're the light, and you don't live in darkness. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, we are God's handiwork. I love that. Every time I think about that, I think about my grandmother knitting, making these beautiful crochet things, you know. How many of you can see that, right? When I read that, I'm thinking, oh, God, you have needed me perfectly in the womb of my mother. You put my eyes where they belong, the color that I needed. You gave me what I needed, every cell of my body, every vein, every artery. You have needed me and formed me perfectly in the womb of my mother. And even when men says it's not perfect, God says, I have put my perfection in them. You know the story of my baby girl who's no longer a baby. She's 34 with two babies of her own. She was born with spina bifida. For the doctors, it was not perfection. For the doctors, it was, let her be. We will take care of her. Don't even go into the nursery. You shouldn't bond with her because I don't think you'll ever see her again. Oh, I know who I am, and I know who my God is. So I said to that doctor, you do whatever it takes, and when you're done, my God will take over. 
The doctor looked at the nurse and said, let's let her rest. She's in shock. Oh, I was in shock, all right. When you left that room, I called my mother. I said, get the ladies out of the house. Praying. Bring out those wailing women. Bring them to the altar. Because God has created a being that needs to be saved from the darkness. Well, you know the rest of the story. Doctors couldn't believe she walks. They still don't know how to explain it. They had a whole team of people when she first got pregnant because they figured, mm, I don't know what's going to happen here. You know, so, so we're going to have her do there. When I went in to see her after she had her first baby, the neurologist, neurosurgeon, the leader of the team, the second team they had, was sipping coffee. He says, this is the easiest coffee break I've ever had. We had nothing because God is in control. Because God creates his loved ones the way he wants them to be created. Missing a limb, it doesn't matter though. Have you seen this gentleman, Nick, who has no limbs? He's the happiest person in the world. He swims, he's married, has a child, can't hold him because he has no arms, but he wraps it around himself. Let me tell you what God does, he does in his image. He don't make no junk. So look at yourself. Look at the neighbor. Say, you looking good. You created in God's image. Now this is it. You look beautiful. This is sign language for beautiful. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And this is what Paul says about Jesus at the center of all this creation and why we were created. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 it says, it's in Christ. Say in Christ. And Christ is the Messiah, it's Jesus, right? It's in Christ that we find out who we are. <laughs> Jesus at the center of it all. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. And long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eyes on us. Had designs on us for glorious living. Tell your neighbor, glorious living. Glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he's working out in everything and everyone. See, God has his eyes on you. He has designs on you for glorious living. Won't you make Jesus the center of your life? We were created in God's image to be God's ambassadors on this earth. But the only way we can fully accomplish this as individuals, as a community of believers, is to recognize Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. It is in him that we have our being. As a center, we, as I said, we hope to train thousands to understand their purpose and their calling. We want to be a beacon of light where lives have changed and communities are transformed because you understand you are a spiritual being led by the Holy Spirit because you were created in God's image. Because you understand that you are a light bearer because God is light and you were created in his image. Because you understand that you are an ambassador of God's love because God is love and you were created in his image. So if you have not fully committed to live a life that centers around Jesus... That does what Jesus would do. In the 70s, this bracelet came out, WWJD, what would Jesus do? It became a very popular thing. Forget the bracelet. Let the Holy Spirit ask you and tell you, do you think Jesus would do that? Do you think Jesus will have you look at that person in that way? Do you think Jesus will have you turn your nose up at that individual? Right now, there are people in your life who need to be loved by you, who are unlovable. Do you hear what I just said? They are unlovable, but they need to be loved by you. See, love conquers all. So my question to you today is, will you make Jesus the center of your life? Will you recognize 
that though you may have walked in darkness, today is the day where God's light shines in you. Will you recognize though you may have a hurdle, um, circumstances in your life that are suffocating you. Will you recognize that once you come to the Lord Jesus, oh, they may not disappear, but though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will be with me. He will not leave you alone. You see, he doesn't promise to take away the valley of death or the shadow of death, but he promises to be right there alongside of you where you can say, Jesus, 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 I need you. Is this you today? Is this you at this moment? Is there an area in your life, a family member, a co-worker, a colleague that you know needs Jesus and you want Jesus to use you as you are created in God's image? If that's who you are, I want you to stand right where you're at. We want to pray with you and for you. And I'm going to ask the ministers to pray for you. There's no shame in saying, I need Jesus. You see, I need Jesus every day. I need Jesus. Do you need Jesus for salvation? Do you need Jesus for healing? As a team worships, I want everyone to just close your eyes so people will not be ashamed. You know what? There's no shame in saying, hey, I'm broken. God can fix me. And even if he doesn't, he's going to love me broken anyway. So let us pray. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will minister to the hearts of the people right now. That they will be bold and courageous to stand and say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need the power of that name. I need the power of his love. I need the power. Jesus.